granny there, doesn't he, with his short. He is an old granny, doesn't you know that? Right, uh, yeah, on that note, morning, morning, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, it actually is a, a public holiday in South Africa this morning, or bank holiday as uh, you folks from across the pond might call it, but uh, here we are, once again. Innovations, inventions is what we're talking about this morning, so ooh, there's somebody else coming in. Uh, so we're going to talk about those inventions. I think, Ed, this was your, your suggestion, inventions that have impacted your life or, or the lives of people around you. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to toss the ball straight across to you this morning and uh, see how you bet with that one. Yeah, and I think you also put a twist on it, didn't you, by saying inventions we wish had never happened in the email. And, and this all started off because a couple of days ago, the microchip was... 60 years old well it was 60 years since the first patent was um lodged which i found quite amazing really um and i thought about or well, what is the the, the 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 best invention or the one that's had the biggest impact in life and unfortunately i came back to the microchip because i, th I thought about my first car and with that car, you had to fiddle about with the carburetor and you had to mess about with the, the distributor. And if you got any water in the distributor cap, you know, the thing didn't work and or the moisture. And, and if the points weren't set right, it didn't work and all that sort of stuff. And you had a manual choke. And do you know what? When I went, to, when I was in South Africa in 2007, I rented a Volkswagen Chico. And that had a manual choke. I couldn't believe it. But of course, you know, nowadays, you've got these fancy um, engine management systems that are all microchipped. And, you know, none of that stuff happens anymore. You don't faff about with distributors and chokes and goodness knows what. And it, the engine just works, doesn't it? And, if, and, and the other day, actually, well, not the other day, because it must have been about two and a half years ago, when my car was in for a service, the guy lent me his, and it was actually a Mark VI Golf that had been chipped. So they upgrade the microchip so it goes like stink. And boy, did that car fly. And then I thought about, well, there's a little box on my wall in the hall. And that talks to a little box on my boiler. And that means that my house is nice and warm all the time. And that's a microchip in, in both of, the, of those things. And then I thought about the time when I wasn't very well and I had to be carted off by an ambulance. You know, straight away, I was hooked up to this machine that decided I wasn't dead. And that was all microchips. Yeah. And then when I was wandering around in Scotland on my sort of great big walk from Glasgow to Cape Roth, I didn't take any fancy stuff with me except my phone. And I had on my phone this app called OS Locate. And if you're in trouble and you didn't know where you were, you just press the button and it told you your map coordinates and it worked on GPS so that you didn't need a phone signal. So that was a safety aspect that I took with me just in case I got lost because I, I you know, navigate by a paper map. And it also had a, a, a button on there I could press as, as an SOS if I was really in you know, desperate trouble. So there's the chip all over the place, you know, phones, uh, hospital stuff. And, and, I, and I remember seeing pictures of iron lungs when people had um, breathing difficulties. They put them in this whopping great big sort of huge container thing like a coffin. You know, now with all the microchip technology, it's like a little tiny pack, isn't it? A friend of mine's got a child that's got, got, got um, chest problems and she needs to be on the ventilator 24 seven. She's got this little pack that sits on her, um, her, her back, little rucksack. And the microchips in there send messages to the hospital so they can monitor a condition all the time. I was talking to a guy the other day that had a pacemaker fitted at 3, 3 a.m. every morning all his information's uploaded to the cloud, so the hospital can monitor him, all chips. So the microchip is the thing I think that has really changed lives for the better. The invention that I wish had never happened is 
celebrity TV shows. Um, I don't watch them, but occasionally there's an item on the news about them. And they're not even B-list celebrities. I've never heard of them. They're probably M-list celebrities. And, and to, to basically talked about religion being the opiate of the masses. Well, I think celebrity TV is lo the lobotomy of the masses. Um, so yeah, that's the one thing I, I wish hadn't been invented. And that's me finished. Uh, thanks, Ed. Yeah, I'm not sure whether celebrity reality TV is an invention, uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe it's just TV in itself. So yeah, well, welcome, welcome Jesper, welcome Les. Uh, glad you popped in. Uh, we're talking about inventions and innovations, uh, both uh, both positive and negative, that. Uh, that have impacted our lives and perhaps the, the lives of people around us. So that, that's where we're going. So, Pat, let's hop across to Australia next and see you, see what you think over there. Okay. Um, my life has been driven by technology, so it's a good one, eh? <laughs> following on from it. Uh, um, yeah, when I was um, a teenager, I actually took computer studies many, many years ago. So I must have been ahead of the curve even then. Uh, um, and my whole, even my working life, I, um, I found myself working in the 1980s in data input, where you have these rooms of computers, but we were, we were putting the electron roll in, so it's like the early marketing. So they were selling the lists, um, but we were putting the, the details into the big supercomputers. And then when I had children, I just, I made the conscious decision that I needed to go back to work because I felt that if I stopped, I would, I would fall behind in technology. Uh, so I ended up, uh, and then I ended up in sort of like in my 30s, I was organizing conferences, uh, Europe-wide Europe conferences on the information superhighway and the new technology that was coming out then, you know, the internet, the World Wide Web, the, the uh, satellite, uh, satellite technology. Uh, <clears throat> we had, you know, uh, beamings from the European Commission to, to Bradford, uh, demonstrated all this technology and um, we, we were at the forefront in technology and education and, 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 and the, the events so when I escaped to Australia I didn't realize that pretty soon not after that technology followed me again and I found myself sort of in the early days of video conferencing uh, you know what we're doing here on zoom I was doing that what 15 years ago 16 years ago, uh, we were a, a podcasting pilot for a government funded program back in 2005. So, you know, technology was, is, is following me everywhere. Um, and even now today, uh, sort of, you know, at the AI and, and being, being on top of it, being, you, you say that you're either a, dig, a digital immigrant, a digital native, you know, digital immigrants are, are people, you know, the older of the old, old us that have had to get used to technology. The digital natives are, are the young ones that have been born by technology. I always class them, I classify myself as a digital captive because no matter what I do, I can't escape it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yeah, I think I think you missed one. There's, there's also a digital exile. So I'm going to go across the digital exile in the group next to Matt's Trevor. <laughs> Right, good morning um, and hello, nice to see Les back in. Um, so there's a couple of technologies uh, that I was thinking of here um, and Pat mentioned satellite. Um, somehow I think there's a, a link between the early film media type productions of the 1920s, uh, the link to satellites uh, TV, which we didn't have. I was born in Zambia, uh, had TV. Um, when I grew up, uh, came here into South Africa, and there was no such thing as TV. Um, and so you recognize just how powerful uh, that medium was for spreading information. Uh, but it was as a result of satellite technology that we were able to start picking up all these uh, documentaries, etc. And then obviously the breakthrough of the web, you know, the internet in 1994, thereabouts, I seem to remember us trying to plug in. <laughs> Do you remember that, Ivan? Um, took about half an hour to actually uh, switch on and get something. 
And then obviously the smartphone, uh, which then went the route that Edward was talking, almost nanotechnology, where are chips going and, and what's happening. So uh, just to follow that trend and how quickly it had happened. But I still go out outside uh, early every morning uh, before the, the sun comes up. So uh, from about uh, 4.30 to 5 o'clock, I pop outside and, and I'm amazed. The satellites that just come across uh, the sky at that time, but you've got to have the sun rising up deep down. Uh, where does it rise up in the east? I suppose it rises up in the west there where you are, Pat, uh, because you guys are upside down. Eh? Um, and <laughs> but it's amazing to see the satellites and, and what they're doing there. Then I, I think the finest technology I have ever witnessed, I witnessed yesterday, I've got to show you um, for the first time ever. Uh, here we go. I've got to show you and I'll go try and uh, share screen and then I can't find a blooming thing. Um, no, okay. Yes. <laughs> when, when, oh, yes, I can find it. There it is. There. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll get it. Uh, and that technology is what I call a boombox. Um, because I heard from one of our speakers here how uh, he took his smartphone into an outside toilet, a mobile toilet, um, and then recorded an entire album. So I thought, no, I've got to go and listen to the album, and I've got to take my hat off to this guy, Antaka Lipa. I don't know who Antaka Lipa is, uh, but he basically turned around to us in this thing, Ultra Instinct, Instinct, and said, stuff it. I don't need all your patronizing pats on the back. Uh, and it's an amazing production. You've got to go and have a look at it. So this technology of the smart boombox, where you can go and record your soundtrack and put it onto uh, global technology, I think is the finest breakthrough I've ever heard coming out of Alex. Uh, I want to pat, I want to pat that Boyke on the back. Uh, you guys have got to go and listen to him. Um, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take that and put it into the chat facility. Um, and is there a bump technology? Uh, while I'm trying to get out of this thing, uh, 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 take exile. You call me stop check. Uh, all right. Um, is there a bump technology I've heard of? Oh, well, surely a toilet must be a bum technology. I mean, it's... Uh... Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> so then I'll wrap it up with a profound uh, profound wrap-up uh, on my side. Listen, I'm going to put the post of that. Go and have a look what Tabisa did with this uh, boombox of his uh, outside of Alex. <laughs> yeah, amazing, an amazing story. And you must pop onto, pop onto the YouTube channel and listen, listen to the, uh, the story from yesterday if you get a chance. So... Liz, I know you're not a, a digital exile, exile or technological exile. You've been in the game almost as, as long as I have. I think about the same amount of time as I have. Hello, I'm, I'm with Dimitri. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm sorry I've been around Hi. for a while. I've been quite busy here. Yeah. But no, uh, I'd actually um, uh, like to cover a couple of things with technology. Um, going back quite a way, um, I think in the early 1800s, 19th century, there was um, two very important discoveries in terms of technology. Was one was the electromagnetic induction by Michael Faraday um, back in the 1830s. Um, it basically uh, opened the whole world to um, electricity. Uh, that's basically one of our probably one of our most important inventions, I think. Uh, but basically, what he did was he discovered magnetism, how magnetism works. And um, so he was um, a bit of a scientist in those days, and he also discovered how um, um, a, a, a wire cutting through a, a magnetic field uh, generated electricity, and that's how we get our modern generators these days and our um, turbines and that sort of thing in power stations. Um, he was he was pretty good in, in terms of uh, analyzing all these things, but he wasn't very good in mathematics. And there was um, a chap by the name of James Maxwell. He had all the uh, mathematical formulas that uh, explained exactly how electromagnetic induction worked. And uh, from then on, obviously, we uh, invented things like turbines and, and how to generate electricity and things like that. And that all still works today. That's how we have our power station. So that's quite an important invention. Another important invention, I think, is the, um, the steam engine, <clears throat> which was back in the 1800s. That was uh, paved the way for... Uh, um, so sort of enhancing the industrial revolution, getting machines going and mass manufacturing and that sort of thing. So I think those are 
crucially important, uh, crucially important uh, inventions. Um, coming to the modern era, I think um, back in the 1940s, um, they invented the um, transistor. And that's because there's all our modern electronics these days. And uh, as we were discussing earlier, microchips and things like that, and uh, carburetors, and things like that. So, I mean, um, the modern transistor gave us the um, switching uh, technology, <clears throat> which we use in the computers and, and uh, microchips these days. So I think that, those are very crucial inventions, I think, and um, very innovative, and that's uh, created, paved the way for the modern technology, modern computers, and that, that kind of thing. And obviously, that leads on to, us on to the onto the personal computer and then invention the, the internet. I think the internet was, um, modern internet was actually uh, sort of um, developed in, in 1969. So it goes back quite a long way, actually. And it wasn't widely used. And um, obviously, it, it, as, as the technology improved with um, you know, uh, networks and things like that, or the networks, the internet came into into being. So I think that basically covers my sort of, um, uh, sort of input in terms of technology and uh, all these inventions that we had these days and how it was developed historically. And what we have today, I think, is actually um, what was created by the pioneers of, of old. So I think it's, it's great to be in today's world with all the latest technology. And, and I think um, it's, you can't fall behind. You have to keep up to date all the time. And that's basically what I do in my software development. I have to keep up to date the latest technology. So that's basically my, my input. Great, thanks. Thanks, Les. Yeah, uh, some, some, some good history there as to how, how it all started and where it all came from. Uh, well, I don't know where it all came from, but how it all started. I think uh, where it all came from is probably going to be a, a, a topic of debate for, for many years to come still. You know, you, you spoke about Faraday. I was, I was thinking about Nikola Tesla. And what you know, what should have happened with some of his inventions, but uh, you know that's a whole another another topic. So anyway, yes, Bo, let's get across to you. What inventions have impacted your life, good or bad? Oh, I think the most positive invention uh, was uh, this, the, the the design of a bed. Uh, I mean, every night we have a good night's rest and uh, we sleep. And I imagine how people did it before there was a bed. Um, no, uh, I think I can, I think most of the previous speakers have touched on that. And I was just thinking in my own life, uh, you don't think really of technology to carry on with life. Uh, but what, what, what has impact my life completely where I grew up and where I'm now. Uh, and uh, the, the few obvious things was the calculator. We didn't have calculators way back then when I went to Varsity, we still had to do uh, manual uh, calculations. Uh, then came the calculator, and it was every boy's dream to have a calculator. Uh, then uh, the computer, with, uh, when I started to work, uh, that was the big thing. Uh, and then um, nowadays, what would we do without a microwave oven uh, compared to the old days of uh, making food on a stove? Uh, then uh, we've already made, mentioned TV. Uh, TV came a long, long way uh, with the smart TV. And I can see the future will be this whole virtual reality where people will almost escape. And uh, we, you know, a, a, a person from the outside will come into a room and say, what are these zombies doing all with their goggles on and each lost in his own world? Um, so uh, I can imagine that. Uh, and then obviously with uh, internet and connectivity, none of us can work nowadays, but we pre pre leading to connectivity and internet is electricity. And here in South Africa, we have a direct impact of what happened when uh, there's no electricity. Uh, and the electricity affects my ability to connect, which is connectivity uh, to the internet. So uh, you just assume these things, the world has become the internet and connectivity, but without electricity, you cut off. Uh, so an old, I don't know how far back electricity goes, but it's still very critical. And uh, probably there will be a new breakthrough so that it will move us away from this dependency on, on the state supplying electricity. Um, and then I had to also say, I'm sure the combustion, the, the, you know, the uh, combustion engine the discovery of that by Henry Ford way, I don't know if it was Henry Ford, but 
you know, I, I, I read some articles of how leading up to the Model T Ford, uh, the concern was how the streets of London would be overflown with horse manure. Uh, and they even determined by how many meters thick the horse manure would be because of all the horses uh, that is now running through the streets of London. And uh, today, you know, now the big issue is the gases coming from the combustion engine. So uh, next is the electricity engine, uh, but it would it started with someone inventing the combustion engine, and uh, then I'm thinking what what will impact us in the future, but we're not sure yet how, uh, and I would say nanotechnology, because with nanotechnology they can now get right into you with a syringe and administer some sort of a targeted drug that goes and only do its own. Uh, say killer cancer cell or whatever the case may be. But what else can they do with nanotechnology? I don't know. There could be some very scary stuff behind that. Robotics, I've seen some very interesting videos of uh, robotics can, that they can run and jump and do somersaults. And uh, so uh, how's that going to impact our lives? Uh, and I can see, I think in Japan, they now have uh, companion bots. Uh, so uh, for the elderly people, so it's that they, they dressed and given a voice and uh, and can interact with people that are lonely. So how's that gonna affect our world? And then the whole thing of artificial intelligence, I don't understand it, I can pronounce the word, but it's about this, all these algorithms that uh, predict our behavior and uh, determine our behavior and together with robotics, uh, you know, in time to come, we'll almost say, when I meet a person, is he a robot or is he a real person? We won't know. Um, and then ultimately, uh, 3D printing. Now, when I first heard of 3D printing, I wasn't sure what would be the application. But nowadays, you know, they talk about uh, instead of preparing your food, take up the components with you. And then while you're in space on your six-month journey, you 3D print whatever food you want. And you 3D print uh, even houses. And you 3D print a whole lot of things. So I think we're in for an interesting ride. And... Uh, we will continuously be technologically impacted. Thanks, Jasper. Yeah, some, some uh, interesting innovations that are probably going to bring some interesting challenges in the future as well. So, to be so, you're the oldest guy on this forum here. So, you know, let's hear your thoughts on technology and how it's impacted your life. You're with us, to be so. Looks like you might have froze technology. You know, you can't trust technology. Okay, I think a couple of speakers <laughs> have actually touched on it. Oh, yes, um, I think a couple of speakers already, you know, touched on it. Um, and I think the biggest in terms of inventions, um, number one, I'd say that it's the computer. You know, Steve Jobs once said that the computer is actually the mind, a bicycle for the mind, because it actually makes everything so simple. You know, we're talking about calculators, word documents, calculations. It makes everything better. And of course, the ultimate invention, you know, I think it's just the internet. You have to give props to the internet. The internet did a lot. You know, the internet improved um, things such as commerce. Um, you, because of the internet, we now have, um, we now have um, industries like FinTech, you know. Um, FinTech is what uh, it made Elon Musk a billionaire, you know. Um, the internet has also unleashed creativity because now everything is decentralized, you know, and now everybody has a chance to be wealthy, you know, based on what you know, based on. And so I think it's how oh, it's so great and it actually gave us capability to connect through video, through through voice. The internet made things great, you know. Quality content, now education, we can actually get online, you know, and it made everything. But now you don't have an excuse. You have platforms like YouTube that can actually how to do things you know 
it's so great, so great. And you know, a technology that is also coming up that I think will be big is actually blockchain. And blockchain is a technology that Bitcoin is actually based on. You know, it is an online journal that keeps um, the transactions of everything that has actually happened, you know? So it's good in an era where privacy is so important because, you know, the future of money, we're not so sure, you know, where it's actually going. So I think that in the future, I think that blockchain is going to be huge. I just like the internet because we made it up, you know, it's, it's not real, it's not tangible, it's not something you can touch. But as humans, we were like, let's do this, this, this. And, you know, through that, it actually became objective. You know, I think like the internet is the champion in terms of inventions. It has made life easier. Um, everything depends on the internet nowadays. And now with 5G, we're going to have the internet of things. Everything is going to be, you know, so quick. Everything, we're going to um, control things in our homes based on our voices, you know, and the internet is very critical for that. So the internet is the future and I don't think there's an invention that can actually beat that, you know? So I think that's just my take on today's topic. Thank you, Ivan. Thanks, thanks, Teresa. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's interesting. You know, I, I sometimes wonder whether some some of these uh, these elements are actually more of a curse than they are a blessing. You know, I was uh, uh, sitting in, in our lounge last night, and my my daughter was having a conversation on a on a telephone with uh, one of her one of her business partners, and next minute her watch started talking to her, and uh, you know, I think Syria is an absolute disaster. You know, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, these things, listening to you all the time, picking up on your conversations, whether whether that's, you know, mm. there's malintent in there or not, I don't know. But, uh, um, you know, why why should your conversation be interrupted by, by a device that thinks you're talking to it? You know, I mean, uh, and, and then it tells you what to do and it tells you it doesn't understand you. Now you've got to respond to it. Um, you know, that Tre for me... Trevor can do that quite well without any technology. Yeah, yeah, and so did you. You've just done it now. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, Ivan, yeah, Ivan, on, yeah. Ivan, on that thought, I noticed today, I don't know if it's the upgrade on Apple or what, but my, my Siri now actually answers back to me as quite disrespectful in the manner. <laughs> There you go. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's fascinating technology. And, and I mean, everybody has pretty much spoken about, about technology um, and, and the way it's impacted our lives. And then, I mean, I suppose it, it probably is a, as a broad subject, the, the, the greatest invention in, in the last century. Um, plus, so, you know, I was trying to scratch my head and think, you know, are there other are there inventions that actually are not technological that have, that have made a big difference? And, and I must admit, I struggle I struggle to think of anything, so it's uh, it's it's quite an interesting, um, you know, it's quite an interesting thought to say. Well, is there anything that is is not technological that has actually been invented uh, in the last 40, 50 years that has a massive impact on 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 the world on on lives? Um, and uh, yeah, as I say, I'm I, I'm scratching my head trying to come up with something. So. Uh, I don't know if anybody else can think of that, but but going back to technology, you know, I mean, there are obviously lots of benefits in, in terms of the way technology uh, works. And I mean, you know, you talk, talk about AI and robots and things like that. You know, I've seen some amazing um, uh, TED Talks on on prosthesis. You know, the, the, the work that they've done with technology on prosthetics um, is, is stunning, you know, and then the development of, of, of prosthetic legs and, and arms and, and even exoskeletons that can that can help uh, people who've uh, you know had severe disabilities um i mean the one chap i saw um was actually dancing two prosthetic legs uh, from above the knee um and and if he had a pair of lungs over his over his legs you would think he's 
he's dancing like like somebody who had natural legs and not not um, not you know technological legs. Uh, absolutely stunning stuff that they're doing in, in that in that sort of area. Uh, yeah, but then back to something really simple. You know, um, I I have a I have a smart watch, not a very smart smart watch. One of one of the the uh, the lower end ones are switched off all the integration with my smartphone so it doesn't tell me what to do when to do it and how to do it all i'm interested in is the the exercise elements and, and the tracking uh you know elements from from an exercise perspective which i think is great you know uh, i used to keep all of those things on either a piece of paper or then eventually a spreadsheet um and now a lot of it is actually recorded automatically for me, and and uh, and I can I can still monitor my exercise and uh, and see how my progress goes. And I mean, the interesting thing for me was last night when I uploaded uh, my latest data, I saw the summary that uh, you know since May, beginning of May last year till now, so basically a year, I've walked one million nine hundred and eleven thousand steps. Um, in, in a year, you know, no, that, that's for me. That's in, that was interesting. You know, it uh, was more than I more than I thought it would be, um, especially during lockdown and all the rest of it. So I think you know, some some of these things can definitely be useful and interesting, um, but uh, I think they can they can get to a point where they can run your life. And uh, for me, that that's the negative uh, the negative element of it. Yeah. So anyway, those are those are my rambling thoughts on on uh, wrapping up this conversation. Uh, so, anybody got a bright idea uh, other than technology for a topic for tomorrow? Thoughts, thoughts? Stunned into silence, all of you. Okay, what, yes, uh, right. okay. what about uh, testing Ed's research capabilities and memories? Non-tech <laughs> non breakthroughs that have changed the world. That could be a really interesting one. So yeah, okay. Uh, that's going to take some thought and some research. So hey, listen, I'm going to have to plug into Google to find. <laughs> uh, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do do it without Google. There you go. Do it without Google. Uh, but uh, a, a world without technology. What uh, can we actually can we actually think of a couple of these things? Well, I was, I was going to say you'd have to go back to Cyclopedia Britannica, but of course that was. Produced with technology, wasn't it? So yeah, <laughs> you got the printing presses technology. <laughs> so uh, even even in its most basic form. So yeah, what is what is non technological that has impacted our our world? Okay, well we like to make you think. So hopefully you'll go away and do some thinking about non technology without your technology. Go and find something non technological and come back tomorrow <laughs> and uh, let's have a chat around that one so have a great day further folks and uh, hope to see you in the morning go well cheers <laughs>